Everyone likes a good heist movie, right? Or a heist series, cannot recommend Money Heist enough. But what about museum heists? Well, there, it could be argued that the people that are stealing are the museums themselves. Because the world of art and artifacts is intertwined with crime, and one of the places that's dominated the headlines lately is the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Right, so far, just this year, at least four search warrants were carried out, and artifacts were actually taken away from the museum to be returned home. And we're talking about some extremely valuable relics. Things like a $25 million bronze statue of Roman Emperor Septimius Severus on loan to the Met. And the most recent bust late last month focused on 18 pieces, mostly from Turkey and India, such as this 11th century piece called the Celestial Dancer. And the key thing, there were a few common threads among the pieces. Either they lack clear providence, or they were linked to the infamous art smuggler, Shubash Kapoor. And the latter of the two should have been a dead giveaway, as he was found guilty of smuggling over $100 million in artifacts from India. And what's especially concerning is that, at least at one point, the museum just didn't care. Or Kapoor was arrested in 2011. Then, in 2013, someone who ran one of his galleries in Manhattan pleaded guilty to selling stolen goods. And despite all that, and the fact that Kapoor was awaiting trial in India in 2015, they still accepted pieces linked to the gallery. In fact, currently, the museum still has at least 85 pieces linked to Kapoor's gallery. And we know a lot of this because of various reports by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists who also revealed that 1,109 of the Met's pieces were previously owned by people indicted on antiquities crimes, with about half of them also lacking any clear providence about how they entered the U.S., which is a major red flag. So with so many pieces possibly being stolen or looted at some point, it's no surprise that we've seen an uptick in the amount of seizures. I mean, they used to be relatively rare. But then, in 2021 and 2022, I'm sure coincidentally Incidentally, when those journalists began releasing reports about the Mets' stolen collections, seizures began to rise. And in each of those two years, six seizures took place. And as I mentioned before, we've already had four this year, and those happened within just the span of two months. And according to the Manhattan's DA office, which is a whole unit dedicated to tracking down stolen artifacts and artworks, the pace is picking up, and adding, expect it to pick up more. For its part, prosecutors seem content to just target smugglers and charge them, rather than hitting the Met with actual charges. With the museum saying the seizure warrants are just a formality because they have a cooperative partnership with the Manhattan DA, saying when the museum received new information from the Manhattan DA's office, office about 15 works of art that made it clear that the work should be transferred, resulting in the constructive resolution. It also added that it was actively reviewing the history of antiquities from suspect dealers. So with that, I do want to say, the Met might be sincere in wanting to deal with sketchy pieces in its collection. And to be clear, they are hardly the only encyclopedic museum with stolen goods. They nearly all do. But it's also important to remember there has been a major push lately for museums to re-examine their collections and how they got their artifacts. Or we're talking about a reaction rather than being proactive. And it's also led to some places like the Smithsonian Museums actively sending artifacts back to their countries of origin if the theory can't clearly establish they were obtained legitimately. So all of that leads us to how did museums get these goods in the first place? Right? It's easy to chalk it all up to theft and smuggling, but it's a little more complicated than that. Right? Sometimes artifacts were gifts, but we now know with hindsight that it was actually more like coercion. Other times they were just taken from their resting places. But one of the largest scale ways to steal art is during war, and we're seeing that play out in real time in Ukraine right now. Right, Just last fall, Ukrainian troops were moving to liberate the major city of Kherson, And as they approached and battles were taking place on the outskirts, a team of armed Russians in civilian clothes showed up at the Hersun Regional Art Museum in over five days, they picked it clean. With it being believed that by using trucks and buses, they managed to take away more than 11,000 pieces of art from both Ukraine and around the world. And the Hersun heist is hardly an isolated event in Ukraine. Russians have looted other museums and centers where artifacts were kept. And some of these items are priceless relics from the region's past, such as Scythian gold jewelry from the 4th century BC, which is an absolutely massive deal because relics that are old and well-preserved from the region are extremely rare. And one of the worst things, this isn't just theft, it's often flat-out destruction. Right? Often in cases where things can't be hauled off, they're just being destroyed with nothing being off limits. I mean, we're talking everything. Orthodox churches being severely damaged, statues demolished, even paintings by one of Ukraine's most loved artists being ruined. Or take the Ivankiv Historical and Local History Museum near Kiev. It wasn't near the fighting at all when it was destroyed, just after the war started, leading many to believe that it was intentionally targeted. And so far, there's been verified damage to 251 UNESCO World Heritage Sites throughout Ukraine. So it appears very clear that all of this is supposed to wipe out Ukraine's cultural heritage and identity, which lines up with past Russian statements calling Ukraine Little Russia and other comments intending to say that Ukraine should have never been an independent state. Which is exactly why when Hersun Museum staff were being sent out, one member stole a rare book that was censored by the Russian Empire and seen as the birth of Ukrainian literature. They're thinking this would be the first thing they destroy because of its symbolic meaning as they destroy everything Ukrainian. And notably, this is cultural genocide and a major war crime under the 1954 Hague Convention. I mean, we haven't seen art looting like this since the Nazis looted all of Europe in World War II. And just like in World War II, we're now seeing teams of archaeologists and museum professionals making their way to Ukraine to help evacuate, protect, move, and hide historical treasures. I mean, we may even see prosecutions of authorities get their hands on the Russians involved in those lootings. Right, I mean, the International Criminal Court managed to pull that off after fighting in both Yugoslavia and Mali targeted historical sites and museums. But even if Ukraine gets their artifacts back, it likely won't be for decades or even over a century, as many countries will tell you. So with all of that, I want to leave you with two things. One, I'd absolutely love to know your thoughts on this news and the situation and those comments down below. And two, remember that in addition to this morning news video, I got a brand new full Philip DeFranco show for you right back here on this channel later today. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you back then.